Welcome to our first lesson in this flipped classroom, inquiry-based learning and technology for ES teachers. So you are watching this before we meet together in the class at school. So when you watch this, uh, please think of all the prompts in the videos and use the Padlet that will be mentioned later in the video. So that when you do come to the classroom, you're full of ideas and you're full of questions that you can share with me and with the others. So our learning objective uh, for this session, uh, for the series of lessons, including in the classroom, is to find out what the basic elements of inquiry-based learning are and how to collaborate in research projects using online platforms. Um, and our digital skill objective is to dedicate planning time to collaborate with colleagues to create authentic learning experiences that leverage technology. So we'll be combining all of this together um, with our digital technology skills and our teacher expectation learning ex objectives too. This is series, this is one of the flipped elements of our lesson. There'll be another after this. So watch the video and then access the resources referred to in the video. Let's start with the role of the inquiry teacher. This, this image comes from Trevor McKenzie, who wrote Inquiry Mindset Book, which we've referred to previously. And if you look at this image, it, we're delving into the mind of an inquiry teacher. Inquiry teachers are playful. Inquiry teachers know their curriculum. Inquiry teachers know their students. Isn't that so important that in, if we know our students and we know our curriculum, then everything just seems to become more easy. And we add an element of play and fun in our learning because why not? Learning should be fun. Learning should be interesting and curious. Inquiry teachers are curious. Inquiry teachers teach slowly. Inquiry teachers reflect and revise as they go, just as I have done in creating this. Inquiry teachers care. We all care. We're here. We're learning together. And inquiry teachers go outside to come back in, meaning that we slow down, we reflect, we go and we come and we go and we come. It's a cycle and it's never ending and it's always changing. A successful classroom, inquiry classroom, begins and ends with the teacher working with the students in inquiry. The inquiry cycle is very important as part of our inquiry-based learning, teaching and learning. Uh, these are two versions of the inquiry cycle. I won't delve too deeply into them, but I would ask you to pause the video, have a look at them. And then when you are watching the videos on the Padlet and reading the, the articles, you will be able to find out more. Now there are versions of the inquiry cycle here. One on the right is from Trevor McKenzie, the other is from the another expert in inquiry-based learning, Kath Murdoch, that we've referred to previously. Um, both of which give a solid uh, guideline for a structure for inquiry. We we want to disband some of those myths of inquiry that inquiry is just doing what you want. Inquiry is very thoughtfully planned and very well structured so that students can use those structures independently to take ownership and de delve into their own curiosities, inquire independently. So when they have this idea of tuning in, finding out, sorting out what they found out, taking that a little further, making some conclusions and taking action, for example, they can use that cycle independently, which is what our ultimate aim is for learners to become independent and thoughtful decision makers. Types of student inquiry here. Through this course, we'll find out that there's not just one type of student inquiry. There are at least four, and there are four mentioned on Trevor McKenzie's image here. Structured inquiry, where students closely follow the lead of the teacher and the inquiry happens together. It's very much like the shallow end of a swimming pool with an instructor helping teachers, helping students just dip their toes in and just get used to the water, just get used to inquiry controlled a little deeper in the swimming pool the teacher 
chooses much of what's inquired into, but the students will take a little more ownership, ask some more questions and get a little more independent. Guided inquiry will be the teacher choosing the topic in questions. The students will design the product or solution a little more deeper in, a little more independent. And then in free inquiry is where the students do all the heavy lifting. They choose the topics and they don't have any prescribed uh, themes or topics to inquire into. They are using all that they've learned to become an independent inquirers. Again, you'll learn more about these in the resources and in the course in the classroom. The inquiry process, Trevor McKenzie here tries to show that an inquiry is a process. It's not just a standalone one-off lesson. It's that there are very many different ideals and outcomes of the process. And the process is not just a one-shot straight line. It's a winding road that often has spaces for uh, pausing and reflecting and going backwards sometimes and then going forwards again. And you can see in here the explore and research, the essential questions, collecting evidence, creating authentic uh, pieces and public displays of understanding. Some sort of publishing is important in an inquiry process. Again, we'll learn more soon. Now, going to ask you to watch the next video in this series before heading to the Padlet to contribute your own thoughts. Thank you.